interesting lock. Malachi Herbert Craven. IQ of 182. Maintains blah. Da, 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 solar power. Area code 312. Chicago, maybe? Okay, what else do we have in this trunk? A security pass for the Healy Healy Research Center. Maybe someone there knows where Dr. Kim is. Must be Dr. Kim's notes. Phew, looks like Greek to me. There, it's out of the ditch. State your business, please. Hi, listen, I found this pass, and I wondered if... I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to put your hands up. Put my hands up? Who are you? Where did you get that pass? Uh, which question would you like me to answer first? That pass was not issued to you. Now where did you get it? I found it. Where? At Dr. Kim's base camp. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm Dr. Kim's temporary research assistant. Today's my first day. Are you... I'm Malachi Craven, of course. I'm the head of this facility. Now explain yourself. I have that pass because when I arrived, Dr. Kim's base camp was all torn up and I couldn't find her anywhere. So I went searching through her stuff for something that might tell me where she is. I thought that since she had that pass, someone here could tell me where she is. Well, you thought wrong. And for your information, that pass was reported missing. She probably stole it weeks ago. You think Dr. Kim stole it? Oh, use your brain. This is a private research facility with highly restricted access. Of course she stole it. All right, that's enough. Excuse me? You're jumping all over me when the only thing I did to you was tell you the truth. I know who you are, Dr. Craven. I know you're an incredibly gifted scientist whose work has never been fully appreciated. In fact, as an amateur horticulturist, I would give anything to know what you're doing with the plants in here. But being a genius does not give you the right to be rude. Oh, I'm sorry, young lady. Everything you just said is quite correct. The genius part rings particularly true. How do you know about me? I read a lot. Like I said, I'm kind of a science freak. If you're interested in horticulture, why are you assisting an entomologist? Well, bugs and plants do kind of go hand in hand. And when I heard there was a free round-trip ticket to Hawaii involved... Smart girl. I'm in desperate need of some photovoltaic cells so I can repair a solar panel back at camp. And I know you're a big proponent of solar energy, so could you by any chance spare me, say, nine cells? Tell you what, I'll give you all the cells you need after you harvest at least a dozen seeds from those plants down there. They represent an extremely promising cultivar that I've hybridized. Unfortunately, I've developed some kind of allergy to them, so that just being in the same room with them has me scratching like a dog at a flea circus. 
My getting seeds from them is out of the question. But since you're here, you can do it. Just pick a few pods, pop them open, and put only viable seeds into the container. To know what I mean by viable, just read the notes that I left down there. No problem. Good. Bring me 12 viable seeds, and those cells are yours. There, 12 viable seats, I hope. Finished? Finished. Very good. These will do just fine. And so, as I promised, instruct Olsen to put a box of A3 photovoltaic cells into Miss Drew's vehicle as soon as possible. Right away, Dr. Craven. Unfortunately, even after I've destroyed those little green devils, I'm told it'll be some time before this itching stops. Isn't there something you could take for it? I was prescribed an antihistamine, but I'm afraid taking it will make me too sleepy to get any work done. Have you ever met Dr. Kim? Possibly. I don't honestly remember. From what I've read about her research, I have no real desire to meet her, quite frankly. What makes you think Dr. Kim stole that security pass? I, uh, that was just my temper talking. I obviously have no reason to suspect the good doctor of any criminal activity whatsoever. Any chance you could give me a tour of this place? None whatsoever. This is a private facility. I'm under no obligation to put my work on display or explain what I'm doing to anyone, except my employer, of course. Who's that? He'd rather I not say. Look here, Nancy. You're obviously familiar with me and my previous accomplishments, so I know how exciting all this must be for you, but I'm simply not at liberty to discuss my current project, though it is truly spectacular. Sorry. I still need to find Dr. Kim, so I'd better go. Marvelous idea. Where these new cells go must have something to do with the numbers on them. But what? There, it's working. Power, that helps.
This is Nancy Drew calling Dr. Quigley Kim. Dr. Kim, are you there? Miss Quigley Kim, Nancy, that you? Yes, I've been worried about you. I'm in a hurry to meet you I've been worried about you. Your camp is a mess. Someone ransacked it. Well, as you are a cop, move out here. <sighs> Where exactly are you? Could you please repeat that? Oh, and be sure to bring my... Dr. Kim, I can barely hear you. Could you repeat those coordinates, please? I rarely get to the new east. Over now. No, wait. I still don't know where you are. Dr. Kim? Nancy Drew calling Dr. Quigley Kim. Come in, please. Great. All I heard was green trigger rock or something. How am I supposed to figure out where that is? Hello? Hi, Joe. It's Nancy. Hey, Nancy. What's going on? Well, after I finally got Big Island Mike to give me the keys to the car Dr. Kim had arranged for me, I started driving. Whoa. So what did Dr. Kim say when you told her somebody or something had torn up her camp? Frankly, I'm not sure she heard me. The radio connection we had was really bad. In fact, she rattled off the coordinates of where she is now so I could plug them into my GPS, but all I heard was north 19 degrees 20-something. I think she said she was at Green Trigger Rock, but I could be wrong about that, too. I don't suppose you'd happen to have a map of the island, would you? No, but I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I'll even ask Big Island Mike. I'm still waiting for a chance to do some snooping around his desk. Well, if you find out anything, give me a call. Remember, what Dr. Kim said sounded like Green Trigger Rock. Green Trigger Rock. Will do. Are you going to be able to get back here with the bridge washed out like that? No, but I'll be okay. That bridge is the least of my worries. I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye. Hey, what's up? Are you familiar with a place in the jungle around here called Green Trigger Rock or something like that? Never heard of it. And I know this island better than anybody. So if I haven't heard of it, trust me, there's no such place. Think you could explain this try it and trade it system of yours again? Real simple. Over at the necklace making table, there's pictures of the different necklaces you can make out of shells, okay? You collect shells, you make something, you turn it in, you get whatever the picture says it's worth in Big Island Bucks. You get enough Big Island Bucks, you can buy some fishing gear and bait. You go fishing, you catch something, you turn it in, you get paid what it's worth. The better the bait you buy, the bigger the fish you catch, and the more Big Island Bucks you get. The more Big Island Bucks you get, the more stuff you can do in here. You see? A never-ending circle of fun. Everybody wins. Especially you, right? Since you get to keep everything we trade in? Hey, the more money I bring in, the less I gotta charge customers like you. You can put the shells you find in here. Whenever you're ready to turn something in, necklace, fish, whatever, go see Pua, not me. She's in charge of doling out the Big Island box. How long have you been in this business? Five years, give or take. Pua's idea. She saw this whole extreme vacation thing coming. I thought she was Papule, but turns out she was right. We've been making money since day one. My daughter is one smart wahine. What happened to her mom, if you don't mind my asking? Died when Pua was ten. Pretty rough on her. Only way she got through it was by going out on her board every day. And look at her. She's a champ. Future's as bright as they come. Turned into your basic all-around good kid, huh? With Pua, what you see is what you get. Just wants to surf. And be the best in the world while she's at it. You're always in here working. Don't you ever get to get out and enjoy paradise yourself? Well, if somebody'd catch me six Ulua, I'd have an excuse to drive him into the market in Hilo and on the way back do a little body surfing at this great little beach I know. I'm game. What are Ulua? Big shorefish. Real good eating. Just so happens I got their favorite food. Right here. Well, get ready to take a little time off, big guy, because I am on it.
Whoa, earthquake! Hey, Joe. Ready for another lesson? Still recovering from the last one. <laughs> you did swallow a lot of water out there. Listen, how about we keep that our little secret, okay? Hey, look. Flailing around like a drowning puppy your first time out or two is nothing to be ashamed of. Happens to everybody. Even Frank? Actually, Frank's doing okay. He hasn't come off his board once. Of course, that might change when he actually stands up on it. Frank hasn't stood up yet? Oops. I probably shouldn't have said that. Look, how about we change the subject? You feel the earthquake? Yeah, wasn't that great? You actually enjoy earthquakes? I love earthquakes. It's like standing up on a big, huge roller coaster. You're not concerned about the damage they do? What good does being concerned do? Look, until somebody figures out a way to stop earthquakes, they're gonna happen. So I say, why not enjoy them? Are Frank and I your only pupils right now? Pretty much. You guys are the only excursions Dad's got going this week. I coach some local kids, but they've got finals. Ever wish your dad had chosen some other way to make a living? Heck no. I mean, we don't live in a mansion or anything, but we got food, we got clothes, Dad gets to show off his island, and I get to surf. Far as I'm concerned, we got everything we need. What else do you like to do besides surf? Nothing. Aw, oh, come on. You like to ride motorcycles, go to wild parties, pig out on shave ice? Tell me. I surf till it gets too dark, I come home, I eat, I go to bed, I get up, I surf till I gotta start teaching, I help my dad, that's it. That's my life. Think that'll change when you win the championship? You bet it will. My dad told me if I win, he'll hire somebody to take my place here, which means I'll finally be able to surf all day. See, what you don't seem to understand is, I get all the kicks I'll ever need out there on my board. What do you think about all this Kane Okala stuff? I'd rather not say. You'd laugh. So you believe he's real? Look, first the Healy Healy Center closes its doors to visitors and gets real secretive about what it's doing up there. Then something goes wrong with the pineapple crop. Coincidence? I don't think so. I mean, Kani Okala has shown up before when somebody endangered the islands. Why shouldn't I believe that he's back? He showed up before? When? My dad said that after the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, people saw Kane Okala all over the place, including my grandfather. You gonna call my grandfather a liar? I'm saying that sometimes people, especially superstitious people, sometimes they see what they want to see. Well, I'm not the least bit superstitious, and I swear to you, I have seen Kane Okala. Now, Amsgray, I gotta work. <laughs>